good since we were young. Yeah, every, every, yeah everything else can kind of just cloud your whole life. Yeah. Like, there's like mysteries of art, and there really is no mystery of art at all. It's just like there to create. <laughs> like, it's, it's like.
In my experience, ideas always seem to fall from the sky. It's not that life is meaningless and art gives it meaning, but rather that life has an excessive meaning. It means too much, and art subtracts things of their meaning so they appear beautiful, without context. Recordable. What's the price of that Rembrandt? Forty million. Somehow it makes the painting seem smaller. Paintings are always either bigger or smaller in person. In person, paintings are always smaller in price and larger in size. Hey, 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 who here and he 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 who here Who he who we who he who who he who he who he who he who
One frame is documentary, two is fiction. Two frames are documentary, one is fiction. The vulgarity of million dollar paintings by poor artists. I don't believe in the afterlife and I don't believe in money after death. And I struggle to believe it before death either. Watching all the works at once is to see that no matter what happens, I will keep producing the same pictures. Knowing that is its own fatalism, it's non-identical freedom. Once you leave the phase of your early work, you have the subjects of your final works, but you don't know it yet. I ask myself, is it beautiful? I already know it's art. I ask myself, is it form? I already know it's content. Living artists have duties. Dead artists have rights. Distribution should be controlled, no different than the camera, the performances, the writing, the lighting, or anything else. If it's for your gaze alone, it's because you don't know your own gaze. It's always a cutout, even with the canon. Cutout started as a way to play, a previs that became the production process itself. Cutouts link drawing and color to a single movement. Cutting the film is the line between color and drawing. In acting, line is first, character is later. To start with character is false and idealist. Nature corrects itself through itself, the nuances of infinity. All is expressed in curve and color. The scissors bring union. All art does is present the reality of free will. It's impossible to speak in front of a painting. I heard he's a bit down and out. I was online and read that. Some people might actually try to crowdfund for him. Cavemen found time to paint. You, poor and unemployed, have no excuse. You, rich and scared bored, have no excuse. One only ever makes things for the big screen. What is it? The greatest it is too divided. It touches too many. Gives the whole thing great. As a gray on gray in dots. Artificial too seasons. Too nested in real weather. Nested in artificial seasons. Nested Leaning in artificial seasons. We all have Leaning reasons, towards new words, not words necessarily. We all have reasons, nested but in not things. words necessarily. Nested in words, nested in things, nested in words. Is a gray on gray in dots. Nested in things. Where the realm of the objective is a gray on gray in dots. Philosophy reality is growing old. Nested in things. If you talk about the right side of history, you are religious.
Dot quotation. What is it? By focusing on the functional, we can understand how the functions are. What would make a genius evil? First we have to ask what is evil. At a purely formal level, we can say evil is causeless. Then what separates the evil from the good? Is the good not also causeless? When we say something is good, we also mean something is sound and endures, can be put to use. We say good in the same way we say it is done. It is not meant morally. What is done is done causelessly. Good is harmony, evil is melody. Good is eternity, evil is temporality. Good is evil self sublation. Good always comes first. In the sense, infinity, infinity is simple, simple, clear, and distinct. Infinitude comes in second place. The good may appear as evil in its singular appearance. The radical evil of cutting the king's head can ground the good, a close up. The good is the master where evil's close up is located. And even if the master is not made, it is presupposed and thus comes first. Masters are presupposed as a place for the close-up, like atoms whose swerve and deviation presuppose the void from which it falls. And so, what is an evil genius? That which obscures the causeless place of its birth, an atom which is its own void. From the standpoint of evil, parents give birth to genius. From the standpoint of the good, genius gives birth to its own parents. The relation of good and evil isn't one of classical logic. We can't symmetrically deduce one from the other. This protects us from saying, all that is, is evil. No more than we can say, all that is, is in close-up. Of course, we can say that representation entails a type of violence. But it's also cheap sentimentalism that makes us avoid the claim that some violences are better than others. I've been represented by some evils that were better than others. Some close-ups are better than others. Are we not in danger of arguing for lesser evils, which would lead us in one way or another to be endorsing evil? The idea of a lesser evil tries to find the good within evil, thus reversing what we said about the evil following the good. Instead, we can say that some close-ups have a less tortured route to this idealized master shot. But we wouldn't say this good, this master, is inside evil inside the close-up. Or else we would be saying all there is is better and worse colonizations. All that is left is punctuation marks, not words. All that is left is punctuation marks, not words. For example, there was a time where I couldn't view junk, but now I see it's crucial to see enough junk to see clearly, but only enough, not too much. Too much and all will begin to look like greater and lesser junk. I find nothing more useless, more stupid than keeping up with a conversation, with a discourse on junk. We don't cut out from coverage, we cut out from a plan. So, if there is a cutout, it is cut from a plan, un plan, a shot. 
less possibility of decontextualization, of studio interference, of the studio in your head interfering. Shooting coverage is keeping up, that is, non-thought. It must be said that no amount of close-ups will constitute a master plan. It's not a question of keeping up. It's helpful as an artist to encounter junk externally and knowing what can orient you back towards the good. Because when you work on your own things, sometimes you will produce junk and you will have to know when there's something worth cutting out and when there isn't. You can start anywhere and freely associate a path to the good. It has nothing to do with keeping up with a projected community, with interconnectedness and the like. This is the fear that leads to coverage. The fear that one must communicate at all costs. Rather, reasons, it has to do with disconnecting from your own interconnectedness nested you have in, in things, regards to yourself. Nested in to assume one is connected in to oneself is the first falsity. Inwards. And we have to locate a first disconnection, even a disconnection of the worst from itself. Coverage is the best way to see nothing. Seeing yourself in a world takes a plan. It's not a mistake that Kuleshov set his films in the United States, even if he's never been there, since the Kuleshov effect is a thesis that claims place does not exist. Or place can exist without being seen. It cannot be seen, but it can be thought. But what will be left, if not art? It will be the first time art was left. I wouldn't attack art in favor of Earth. The Earth can perish. One does not make art because one assumes it will live on on Earth. Art lives on in the mind. And if there are no minds, it does not change the fact there was a time whereby this art was mined. Why continue existing? For its own sake? Without art, I wouldn't find the desire to exist. I can picture a planetless art, but an artless planet is much more frightening. You can picture both. We know both exist. That's why you're frightened. Art has as much relation to Earth as picturing does to sight. To have an eye isn't a question of sight. Art is of mind only in the present. Not the small-minded question of being remembered, but remembering the present. Remembering to remember yourself in the present. You find the eye that isn't the void. The void is with the studio, not the artist. Today a studio isn't respected if it's just your home. You wonder if your home is being respected or not. A studio is already its own retrospective, so it's not being invited by others, but letting others in. Unless they're already dead. The void is retrospective, while infinity is prospective. In a studio, the same collection that may be part of a retrospective has the texture of the perspective of what's next. 
A retrospective heals the wound with the spear that smarted. One is paid for the Q&A, not for the works. Can't sell your work, but you can sell your labor. The living sell their labor. The dead are their works. Dead labor. I am selling these.
difficulty is in the fact that a style of thinking in one world may have different consequences in another. How so? All of the greatest masters of art are masters of decontextualization. In art, there's an inner truth and greatness to the dissolution of context. You do not need context for art. You only need to experience the work in question. The work itself is riddled with new forms of decontextualization. Objects writ from worlds, things writ from objects. That is its power. And in another world? In the world of politics, that same genius of decontextualization appears as something else. We have fascism. The power of fascism is its bundle of decontextualization. So must we abandon the power of decontextualization in art for something else? I don't think so. So much of liberal or leftist art suffers in the fact it drowns itself in context. Art becomes nothing but anthropology. In politics, perhaps we need a greater context to understand how action is possible, how change is possible. But in art, context is a prison. In politics, decontextualization is an attempt to put more people into camps. In politics, the decontextualization evacuates history and presents ideas ripped from their origins. And in origin, the good, the idea of ideas, is first. Fascism is always decontextualized emancipatory politics. It always comes after. Or is a displacement of an emancipatory politics that is lacking.
can admit, despite its falsity, that I felt some catharsis in hearing such unfiltered hatred. But from there, I must know that catharsis isn't a knowledge and must be rejected. Thankfully, Thankfully it can be recorded. It can be, recorded. Can be shared, no matter, no matter the falsity of catharsis. The recording is, the what, recording ends is what ends its effect as catharsis. Eternity must be recorded, and is only possible through recording. And we can compare recordings to see what these recordings are. Silently. Always be ready to learn a new language. Recordable. But without a plan, as true birth was always without. Contextlessly. Life has an excess of meaning means too much, and art subtracts things of their meaning, so things appear contextlessly beautiful. By a comparison beautiful. without context. By a comparison without context. It was always without. Contextlessly. By a comparison without context. The right to create is the right to destroy your work. Creation is never a right. It's without law. It's violence's law founding.